I had to make some medallions and they're pretty cool. So the technique that I, um, you know, use is, is fairly common, but, uh, there's a couple little tricks that I'm looking for now. It's one of the coins right here. Uh, and they're rather easy to make. Uh, I'm working with, uh, some low temperature pewter. Um, which I rarely work in and now I'm like, gee, I should have started this a long time ago because the stuff just melts so fast and easy that it's a little bit like doing uh, candle wax. <laughs> so, uh, let's see some of the little tricks I do for making these work out. So, first things you're going to need, and this is, this is the best trick right here. We need a cup. This cup is about three ounces. I bought like a whole stack of them for a dollar at some place that might be known as a dollar store. And what we're going to use is look, the bottom has like a perfectly round little shallow coin space. And what we're going to put in there is uh, uh, this is some no name brand. It's like a car body filler. Bondo is a brand name that you might have heard. So this is some kind of a two part filler. Um, and you shove it into this area here and leave it a little heaped up in the middle. And see, here's the part that I took out. So there's that and it gets hard. And it takes about 15 minutes depending on the temperature. So this happens to be a, a white or a clay color. Uh, usually it's red. Uh, sometimes it's gold. It all depends on the color of your, um, your resin. So now I have that little token. It's not too bad. You see, this, it's broken. It's almost flat. So what you need is to clean up your desk make enough room on here for a piece of sandpaper this is a pretty heavy piece of steel but you may not have it but you can use any flat surface this is 100 grit sandpaper uh, you're going to take uh, and hold this down there uh, on there and you're going to rub it back and forth Uh oh, you got to hold the paper still then you're going to wear out a little hole in your thumb like that Until this gets flat and on the other side Which uh, you'll also want to kind of rub that just gently because you don't want to make this uneven but uh, because it's really easy if you push on one side, it'll get thin on one side thick on the other Just want it to get kind of flat so it's a little more coin shape. After you're done with the 100 grit, get yourself some 220. Now the 220 is going to take all the scratches out that the 100 grit started and you do it again. Actually, probably could do this in real life, but I just wanted you to kind of follow along. So it's a demonstration, that's it. So now we have over here we drew out a little circle and then we drew our pattern that we want to create into the circle. So I took my trusty scissors and cut out that pattern and here it is on my, on my piece. So uh, I cut out the outline of my pattern and um, I glued it on there with a little bit of spray adhesive. So now we're getting ready to uh, use a Dremel tool and we're going to carve out all around the, the pattern that we just glued on there. So that's uh, going to take a little while. Probably, it takes me about a half an hour. So I've glued the uh, paper on the front and now I'm taking my, my little Dremel motor tool and the uh, carving a recess into that coin. Here was um, a different sticker that I made on the back. This was a piece of packing tape, you know, the, or a label. Yeah, packing label. And uh, that was thin enough to fold in half 
and then cut out that pattern of an axe and then it just sticks right on. That was pretty easy. Good tip. So I've used a little bit of acetone to uh, soften the glue and wipe off the the label or the uh, paper that I had glued on there. Now you can see I followed up um, well, let's see. First, I used acetone to clean off all the marks. And uh, this side over here, you can see that some of the detail isn't in there. We're about to put that in. This side, we have already gone back and etched in the detail so that we have a very good, clear relief for our casting. All right, so here's what I've done. This morning, I went and put a coat of... Uh, spray paint right here on our piece and uh, I used a glossy paint just a thin coat you don't want much because if you put too many layers in there you'll fill in the details of their piece so uh, that's what we're working on uh, you're going to need something smooth to work on because you have all this uh, uh, casting sand uh, this is called green sand. It has um, a little bit of uh, clay in it and sand mixed together. So that, and then just enough water, you spritz it with water until you can make a clump like this. And then it breaks cleanly in half like that. That's how you know you got enough water in it. So, uh, this is ready to go. Now, I know a lot of uh, people aren't going to have all these parts and tools, but uh, they're kind of basic. Um, you need a spoon. You can get one from the dollar store for a dollar, made of stainless steel. Make sure it's not, <laughs> yeah, something like plastic. Avoid any plastic handles, make sure they're all metal. Um, so I made, I made these forms myself. They're cast out of aluminum. I made a wooden mold and voila. You can use almost anything to make a mold from. Uh, the important thing is the mold has index points like that. As you can see, they fit together and they make a window. You can see things through that window. And uh, slight taper to the edge. Side that's going to be up on your first mold. So you uh, put that down like that. This is where the hot metal is going to come in. Put a nice little cover. Alright, so here's one of the special uh, items that you need. Baby powder. And uh, you don't want to sprinkle it right on. Uh, what you need to do is put some like in a sock. It works really good, but I lost mine. Uh, it, this is a terry cloth towel, like a dish rag or something, and then you just dust it like this. Okay, so now it's dusted. Get one of these uh, splatter screens from the uh, store that you put over your pan. That's a rather fine mesh. You lay that on there. Take a little bit of your uh, sand and just rub it in the top. There you go, it's all covered. Now you're going to take big clumps of this sand and fill up your mold. Pat it right down in there. Then you take some kind of a straight edge and scrape this smooth. And on, on the back of that, we're going to take a little piece of uh, thin plywood, put it on there, and we're going to make a sandwich. Okay, now we've flipped it over. I'm going to take my pen right around the edges and just, just clean it up a little bit. Just, just lightly trace around there. Yeah. Let me make a mess. I'm looking at the camera. 
All right, so there, now that little lip is made. I'm going to put this piece back on top. And uh, then we're going to use the screen again. Put our little bit of sand on there. And then put more in there and tap it down. Hey, look at that. I barely got that thing balanced somewhere. Ooh, two hands. Alright, so we're going to move this out of the way. I'm guessing you can barely see this in here. Good tap it. There it goes. The metal's going to come in. So we need to make a little channel for it to go through. And uh, sometimes a little bit of sand gets stuck in here. So at the bottom we're going to make another one that goes down a little bit. And uh, that's so that any dirt that it might pick up, it'll deposit down here and not ruin your coin. So we've sandwiched our mold together. That's where the metal's gonna go in. Take our little metal melting pot, whatever it, that is. Light up our torch. Push that button. Ooh. So this is um, lead free pewter, it's a real pretty silvery yellow and uh, we're going to melt a little bit into our um, pot here. So we got a little more than uh, the size of the coin we're going to cast. Put the heat to it. This pewter does not take very long to melt. It's a very low, low temperature melt. So at the same time, I'm heating up the spout. There you go. All right, so it's pretty clean coming out of a block. So we're ready to pour this. Bring it over here. Don't waste too much time. Just get it right in the hole. Filled it. All right, drum roll, please. Oh, what do you think of that? I gotta redo that every time. Sometimes it's tempting to go and uh, pour another one because it comes out so perfect. And yes, I've done it. And sometimes it works well. But um, usually for really good results, you should do it every time. All right, what do you think? I think that's gonna come out pretty nice. So I've taken it out of the mold, um, I'm snapping these off if they snap off. Looks like I'm going to have to take these little cutters and snip it. There it is. So uh, save the parts that you break off, that scrap just gets melted right back into the next batch. Alright, so uh, we got to... I'll show you how to finish this a little bit. So I've got a nice flat surface. This is um, uh, 220. And um, we're going to start cleaning this up and trying to polish it. Close? It looks like I'm close. All right. So uh, all around these edge pieces, I think this is, uh, well, this looks like 220. So we're going to do this around the edges. Uh, 
Okay, so you want it smooth around these edges. So you can run your finger on it and you don't get any scratchy feeling. Then you're good enough there. All right, so uh, this is pretty flat. And it's going to, to make it shiny, you've got to make it really flat. Now in the, uh, the mold, we went to 400. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to just get uh, a little 220 here to uh, get down to one flat surface. And hopefully it's not too scratchy. All right, I think that's going to be enough. So um, you can see some of the scratches in the metal. I'm going to do it for both sides. Uh, then we go to the 400. Now, you could do this in water, um, which would probably work better, but it's freezing in this shop. And uh, we're just going to make do without water. Okay, I can see some very, very fine scratches in here. Once we get to the 400 stage, you can rub it right in there. And um, you're not going to change the shape of the uh, piece. Now, 220 is capable, is going to cut fast enough that it could uh, change the shape of the coin. Let's see if we can, how's that look? Pretty good, huh? All right, so that's still not the polish. That's just uh, getting it ready for polishing. We've got to do the same thing for the other side. So you'll need one of these, a little buffing wheel. And um, we're going to use uh, some red on this. It's uh, about as fine as we get. I haven't tried the white diamond yet. That's probably wouldn't hurt on this one. Uh, but we've got red here and we're going to keep it here. Now we're going to carefully buff this to a shine. There it is. All buffed up and shiny. Oh, probably forgot to tell you about putting the drill hole right there. There you can see it now. Um, that's for whatever type of string that you're going to use to tie this to a medallion.